Hey everyone, Ox here, ready to bring you another belated episode of Guild Wars Corner, episode 15. And here, as you can see, I got some footage of the Halloween event with our favorite Mad King, Mad King Thorn. And one neat little thing here was starting out, you'll see here in a little bit, but when the Mad King does his Rock, Paper, Sister contest, uh, he actually called upon me the very first time, and that never happened. So I was like, I was pretty pumped about that. I'm like, yes, he, he chose me. And actually, I think I, I got a draw. I didn't win. He won't let you win. Uh, very rarely. If not, he just kills you. <laughs> but this guy is something else. He's just awesome. So the one thing about the Halloween event is... It seems to be that one time of the year where the population of the Guild Wars server suddenly doubles. Like, everyone just comes back, comes out of the woodwork, comes in from, I don't know, Guild Wars 2 or Star Wars The Old Republic or some other game that they've been playing. Maybe uh, League of Legends, Dota 2, you know, if they've been getting a lot of players, have been getting a lot of players for quite some time. And it's like, hey, let's, let's jump into Guild Wars and uh, we'll do this uh, Halloween special. So, got a hat. Actually got my witch's hat. Got here on, on, on Caitlin, my necromancer. She got two. I got the witch's hat and the ferocious ears. The little bunny ears. Or, not bunny ears. Cat ears. Little cat ears. That look really, really well on her. And didn't do a lot of the quests for some of my other characters. Because they were kind of like doing the same thing over and over and over again. But I made sure I did with my main, with Caitlyn here. And uh, that she got... All the goodies as as usual. So while well, the other characters get get the shaft, but <laughs> uh, came in on this uh, Halloween event. Actually, I think I came on the second to last one of his appearances in in Halloween. Actually, I was doing real Halloween at my house, and we had quite a few kids. Although with the, the weather was was lousy here in Michigan, it was cold, it was rainy, but that did not stop the the faithful, the true the the true warriors of of candy that were coming out and. The first hour or so, we hardly got any kids. I'm like, man, you know, there's just gonna be no one here. I want this big bag of candy, just you know, all to myself. I was gonna just take it to work and let the guys at work just have at it. Then, like in a half hour period, it was they, they all came out at once. They just flooded the doorstep. It was like, oh my god, can we have candy? I'm like, yeah, trick or treat. Yeah, you know, here, here you go. Here, here's all the candy. You know, it's better on your thighs than on mine. So here you go. <laughs> and it's getting out know, two or three. But uh, it was it was a lot of fun, although it was kind of short because, again, the, the weather was lousy, so they didn't stay out too long. And then once the sun really did go down, you know, I got rid of the candy and, and that was it. But it was, it was pretty fun, though. And kind of going uh, going from there. Now, again, as I mentioned, this, this video was a little bit belated, um, a little bit delayed in coming out. Probably about almost over a week, actually. Uh, there were two reasons for that. One, actually, was from this event. The, the Guild Wars server has, has been having some issues for, for a couple days, and I was going through this Mad King event. It was a lot of fun. A lot of guys were there. We're going through the whole spiel, you know, listening to those dumb jokes and playing rock, paper, scissors and, and dying all the time. We got here right towards the end and almost got the almost got the tonic and then bang, crash. The whole server crashed. My, my connection got cut. We got, you know, thrown out. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. You know, try to log back in, couldn't log back in. I'm like, what's going on? I get back in, I find out it wasn't just me thrown out, it was everyone. The whole server just ejected everyone. <laughs> and my response was was a very simple one. Well played, Mad King. Well played. <laughs> You're still a jerk. I'll see you next year. So so that's uh, that was interesting. I, I wasn't too too bummed about uh, getting the tonic or the prize, which could try. I, I got several of those already in my in my bank account, and you know we'll, we'll see the guy next year anyway. So I'll get it. Now. I'll get it then. So. Anyways, moving on. Been uh, a lot of things going again. As I mentioned, that the server was was hiccuping for quite a while. I was trying to do a, a Zeichen mission in the Crystal Desert, and the lag was terrible to the point I was getting thrown out of the game two or three times all right you know what that's it until these lag issues are, are fixed I wasn't gonna play Guild Wars and I didn't play for about five or six days actually and 
kind of gave time for ArenaNet to fix. They did do a, a hot pit, a hot fix. They did do a patch. Whatever it was, uh, they had fixed it uh, on the server, so that was good. And this last weekend, I jumped back in and got back in the swing of things a little bit. But during the time I was off, I actually had uh, a chance to play quite a few other games. And one was I had gotten into the Elite Dangerous Beta. And that was really interesting. So I'm going to try and put some, some footage up of the uh, Elite Dangerous Beta. Not in this uh, video, but maybe in a separate video. But it's been a lot of fun. And it's also been very important. Um, as a gamer for, for myself and I'm just going to expand that a little bit. and I was thinking about it quite a bit in depth and there's a couple things but the big one is that the space sim genre as a whole there has been no other genre that has been as dead or out of favor for as long as the space sim genre the space sim genre and the, even the flight sim genre the action flight sim genre but especially in the space sim genre the, it was really big during the the 1990s so you had series like wing commander you know x-wing tie fighter free space many many others that were really really good it was a lot of fun and i loved those games i played all the wing commander games all the way through i had played all the x-wing i had played all the tie fighter which is considered by many to be one of the best games ever made and for good reason, because it really is that that good. I had tried uh, a lot of other games, uh, mostly from Chris Roberts, uh, Star Lancer, and then Freelancer after that. But around that time, especially when Freelancer was coming out, which was the early 2000s, the space sim, space sim genre really fell out of favor. And when it fell out, it really fell out, like with a massive thud. Free Space 2 had come out, and Free Space 2 was regarded as probably the best in the whole in the whole genre and it was a massive dud it was a flop at least on the financial level and that's when all the major studios started to really abandon the, the space sim genre it was played out or they had thought it had played out completely and they went on to new and better things and there were or what they considered to be better things and there were two things that were on the horizon that had come out that really shifted the whole pc gaming environment uh, in that direction. The first one was the massively multiplayer online gaming phenomenon, which had really started to take off at that point with Ultima Online, and then the big one was, was EverQuest, when EverQuest came out, also, also known as EverCrack. <laughs> it had really been a huge success, and of course later World of Warcraft, and, and it kind of goes from there. The uh, second one was, was uh, another one that's, of course, still very very big today and that's uh, the first person shooter genre the first person shooter really took off you know around the early 2000s um the first call of duty was was on the horizon and then uh uh yeah quake arena and a lot of others and there the first person shooter genre was was there during the space in uh golden age wolfenstein or oh, doom of course yeah <laughs> uh quake quake 2 a, a lot of the there was a lot of them but it had not gone off on the multiplayer aspect until about Quake Arena. Quake Arena really started to take things off and then Call of Duty, you know, started to do the same thing and then started bringing more RPG type elements and, you know, the rest is history as they say. But the space sim genre was gone completely. All, you know, there was one series left that was of course the X Beyond the Frontier series. It was kind of the last one that, that had kind of kept the, the flag going. But it wasn't enough to keep the whole genre going. Um, and the X Beyond the Front sea, Frontier series was not the same animal as you would see in a Wing Commander or TIE Fighter. It was more of an open sandbox uh, type of uh, single player trading and, and kind of combat game. And it, it didn't grab the whole audience but like we saw with uh, Wing Commander and, uh, and TIE Fighter. And there was also another issue with the X series and that was when the X series was released it had so many issues. Every single game, other than the very first one, but every single game had so many major issues that you would have to wait a year or two for enough patches, enough fixes, usually from a very 
you know, small but very dedicated community to make the game work. It was like the game was never finished. You know, X2, a horrific voice acting, you know, and, and cutscenes. <laughs> you know, X3 almost coming out uh, uh, broken, you know, and then took a long time time to fix. They finally did fix it, and it's come on very well. But if you look at the reviews for these games, you're going to see that the reviews were made at the time of release and reflected the game accordingly, <laughs> to say the least. So... The space sim genre just never had a chance to really took off, and there was not a whole lot of backers for it. But then, about two years ago, two date, two people, uh, one of course is Chris Roberts, and another one was uh, David Braben, decided to relaunch their respective series again. Chris Roberts doing Star Citizen, who was the father of Wing Commander, and David, uh, David Braben coming back and redoing Elite. Now, the two different kind of kind of animals but they were they were two titans in the space uh space sim genre and the excitement for it from the people in the community they both had started with kickstarter campaigns was enormous i mean the amount of money i mean just look at star citizen and the most successful kickstarter campaign ever made or ever done at this point hugely successful and really goes to show that hey you know what a lot of the major studios, all the major studios, really misjudged the fact that uh, the space sim genre was, was dead, when in fact it wasn't. There was a lot of uh, interest in keeping it going, and you know, credit to them. You know, Chris Roberts and David Brayman really came back and I think made a very significant contribution in restarting their series. Uh, of course, not not Wing Commander for for Chris Roberts again. Electronic Electrona Arts owns the uh, intellectual property of Wing Commander, so of course he's starting a new one. But with Star Citizen, Star Citizen, we'll see how that goes. But Elite Dangerous is much closer to release. It's going to be released next month. They've announced the release date, so that is one that's going to be very very interesting. Now. I'm going to keep going with Guild Wars, of course. Uh, Guild Wars is very interesting. Everything I had mentioned about Guild Wars in my previous episodes uh, still apply. But there's, uh, there's been quite a few uh, things going on with, with that. But if I go into a second game, it could very well be Elite Dangerous. And you can see uh, some videos coming up on that. Because I would like to see that. And it, and it is a completely different game, completely different genre. You know, given, you know different uh, play play system and things like that so it's not gonna be like one encroaching on the other because they're two very different animals and you get two very good uh, different experiences with it so they can coexist at the same time now if you see guild wars and me going into world of warcraft or something then yeah something's gonna have to give <laughs> probably guild wars you know if i went to world of warcraft I'm not saying i'm doing that but i'm just saying hypothetically speaking if i'm going to you know a game like um Guild Wars and going to something very similar to it, then odds are I'm switching from one game to another. But if I'm going from Guild Wars to Elite Dangerous, they're n nothing close to each other, then uh, I can do both at the same time. Again, granted to how many hours that there are I have available you know, during the game. During the game, so that's what uh, I'm kind of looking at right now. And uh, been playing a lot of the beta recently. Found my joystick, but blew <laughs> blew the quarter inch off of my joystick. Uh, I'm sorry, for recording some dust off my joystick and trying it out. Now, back to Guild Wars. Again, came back about uh, a couple days ago, about during the weekend, and I got my monk, finished factions with my monk, so that's my second character that's finished factions, and I'm charging through Nightfall with, with my necro, which has been a lot of fun. Now, with the guild, uh, the guild's gone kind of quiet recently, in the last couple weeks, and... I had to really think a lot about about the guild uh, a couple of days ago. One is we've had a lot of people kind of leave, not the guild, but they've left the game. Uh, that's been pretty clear. I would say about half the guild uh, is no longer actively playing Guild Wars. They've been gone for over a month or, or some long period of time. I know several of them, including my kind of my first officer. <laughs> went and, and uh, told me that uh, they were playing Guild Wars 2 and their <laughs> poor guy was almost afraid to tell me. He was like, oh my god, you know, Alex is going to kill me. I was like, no, no, no. Like I said, you know, Guild Wars 2 is, is a good game at what it does. My only thing was it wasn't Guild Wars 1. You know? 
So if they want to play Guild Wars 2, no problem. I even told my character name in Guild Wars 2. I don't play her a whole lot. I'm usually playing something else, but you know, hey, maybe we can meet up sometime. So, so yeah, that that's cool. It's a game. You know, I'm, I'm not taking it too seriously. It's what I do on my phone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like it's not like we're married. You know, it's not like we're married to this game or, or something like that. You know, if I need honesty and commitment or something, like, no, no, it's, it's, it's just a game. So, you know, I'll play something else. You know, we're gonna play something else. I play something else. Like I said, an Elite Dangerous. I went on about an eight minute tear on. On Elite Dangerous, <laughs> and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other games I'll be playing as well. I need, I even need to blow the dust off of my Wii U because we got Smash Brothers coming out here in ten, 10 days. Yeah, the twenty first. So yeah, until ten days, Smash Brothers gonna be coming out. So everyone's excited about that. I'm excited about that. So gonna be uh, justify my my Wii U person, my Wii U purchase, other than just Mario Kart. So so that'll be cool, and we'll so, see how it goes from there. But with Guild Wars, though, I plan to stick around with Guild Wars, although it won't be 100% uh, as it was back in, in October. It's been a blast. I've had a lot of fun with Guild Wars. And my plans are right now is to continue through Nightfall and complete all the PvE content of the game and try and see what PvP content we can get going, whether it's in Alliance Battles, or it's in uh, random arenas and things like that. Again, the initial focus of the guild was to kind of get GVG going. That, unfortunately, has just not taken off. And we have to be kind of realistic because, you know, at this point, the uh, the numbers are just not there. They're not there with the guild. And you know, whether it's people leaving the game or, or doing something else, that's fine. I've only had, actually, two people kind of leave the guild, leave the guild to join another guild or some of that you know that's that's perfectly fine but everyone else like i said they didn't leave the guild they left the game <laughs> there's not much you can do about that so so no no problem there but you know again i have to be realistic and that's one of the problems with guild wars again it's such a great game but the environment within community has been on a slow but consistent decline you know over the last last year so i think we're going to see this continue and one of the members of my guild had, had made a good statement and he he really i think pointed out co completely i didn't agree with him at first but now the more i think about the more i am inclined to agree with him and he said look i am not going to, i'm quoting him i am not going to support guild wars with purchases or or buying something new or or zoom line paints until i see arena net really support the game like i am not going to support arena net until arena net supports the game uh with guild wars one of course we know that is not going to be the case arena net has you know closed up shop and they've moved on and they're not coming back to guild wars one i think that's a feeling that's starting to really spread around the community it really feels like we've been you know kind of abandoned by arena net with a game that we really like because a lot of the interest in in games as you see channels to whether it's world of tanks or Guild Wars 2 or something like that. There's always upcoming content that you can always talk about. Well, we can't do that with Guild Wars 1. <laughs> the content is what it is, and that is uh, what we are what we are stuck with. So, it's a lot of content. It's been you know three major expansions and, and missions and builds and things like that. It, there, there's a lot to talk about, but there's a finite amount to talk about, and it's going to get exhausted at a point. And there's nothing new on the horizon to look forward to. And I think that's been a large demotivator for the community is that there's nothing new on the horizon and that has been a huge huge issue so my first impression at first was well you know there's so much content here that you know, we, we can we can talk a long time with the content is available we don't need new content but now from the standpoint of i guess you could say morale and how the community views the game you need more content there needs to be more on the horizon it's going to come into the game and I don't want to sound like the, uh, the grave digger here, but you know, that is one of the things. So we see some real estate changes from our end. That's not the case. I think at some point the community is going to leave, at such a point where the community is going to leave in such numbers that it's not going to be consistent. It's going to be negative feedback. So people come into the game, they see going around, they leave the game, and it won't be a lot of people leave, and it's going to be a lot of people leave, and it's going to be a lot of people leave, and it's going to be a lot of people leave, and it's going to be a lot of people leave.
and most places it already is a ghost town. You can't get a pickup group to save your life unless you're doing maybe a Zeichen mission. Um, random arenas are, are empty. Let's see what else. A lot, you know, even a lot of the cities are, are empty. Most of the cities are empty unless you're in uh, Kamadan and a few other places. It does feel uh, But I am not going to be leaving the game anytime soon. I'm going to finish up the game. I'll hopefully keep doing episodes and, and keep things interesting. But don't be surprised if I have like any months. It's, it's time, time to move on to a game that's actually supported by the company that, that released it with new content. And there's actually something to talk about other than you know, rehashing the same thing over here. <laughs> which you will, or which well, I will, get to at some point because there's nothing left to talk about about the game because there's nothing new on the horizon to, to get people excited. So. Anyways, that, that's my spiel. That's going to be for this week. Uh, again, I apologize for the delay. Again, I had some, some server issues and then I, I was trying a different game while the server got, got up to speed. The other reason was the election uh, had come around and I was getting phone calls every five minutes because in the United States, even though the, it's a midterm election and we didn't vote for, for president, almost every other office is, is up for grabs, you know, whether it's from you know, the state senate to the local dog catcher, you know, everyone's calling you and I couldn't get five minutes of peace to actually make a recording. It was just phone call after phone call. So thankfully that's all uh, done and we'll kind of go from there. So take it easy, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Have fun.